What's going on YouTube? This is Mr. Dude 206 and it looks like you went ahead and selected to watch my tips and tricks collecting thrifting information collaboration video. Basically what I did is I asked a whole bunch of people from YouTube and Facebook that I think would give a nice tidbit or a little bit of information through their experiences in collecting video games and thrifting or shopping for video games in general. And so um, it initially started with me looking around the internet or around the YouTube and trying to see the tips and tricks for myself, but it was always individuals just sharing their point of view. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to grab a whole bunch of YouTubers that I know, a bunch of bromies, homies, and the ones that are close to know me, to put it all in one video so that one person may use as a tool. So anyways, I'm going to go and cut at it. And the first one in line will be the first one in line, and I'm going to go ahead and cut it right here. So enjoy what you see, and hopefully you can have a little bit of knowledge by the time you're done watching this video. And I'll throw in my little two cents at the end. Here we go. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew from Andrew's Games Display, and my tip for retro video game collecting is next time you are at a thrift store, make sure you don't only check the electronics section for things like video games and consoles and accessories, uh, because you just never know what might accidentally be placed elsewhere in the store uh, where you wouldn't really think for things to video game related things to be. Uh, now these are based on true experiences that I have had, um, so just let me show you a couple of things that happened to me. Uh, because you never know when you're going to come across a Rob mixed in with the kids' toys. You never know when you're going to come across boxed video games mixed in with the VHSs. And you never know when you're going to come across boxed gaming watches with houseware items like plates and forks and knives. Okay, so always look out for things like that. The good thing about things being placed in the wrong area is that the price usually won't be ridiculous on them because I don't know about everyone else. Uh, but thrift stores that uh, were in my area recently have been charging like seven bucks for loose Sega Genesis games. It has been ridiculous. But when some, uh, someone places something in the wrong area, they'll usually just brush it off as something that's a dime a dozen and you'll usually get a pretty good deal on it. So uh, make sure that next time you go to a thrift store, you look for things in other areas because you never know what you are going to find where you least expect it. Really, Edward? Really? Oh, hello there. My name is JCAU99, and I'm here today to give you a tip on thrifting. I would highly recommend checking the VHS tapes, even if you're not into VHS tapes. I found a few good things looking at VHS tapes, including box Super Nintendo games and even 3DO games. There's also video games that are were VHS based such as the Action Max. So when you're at the store or you're at the thrift store, check the VHS tapes. Deuces! Uh! What's up guys? Justin here with a real quick response to Mr. Dude 206's collecting tips compilation video. And my tip is going to be pertaining to game hunting at the thrift stores. And it's probably the single most important thing that I can think of, and that is that you have to go often and you have to be persistent about it. I can't tell you guys how many times we have people comment on our videos and say that they went to their Goodwill yesterday and they didn't find anything, or all they had was a stack of sports games. And honestly guys, most of the time when we go to the thrift stores, we don't find anything either, but because we're there five or six days a week, ideally the one or two days a week that we do find something make up for the days that we don't find anything. And as for the sports games thing, 99% of the times if you see a stack of sports games at a thrift store, all it means is that someone beat you to the good game. So you gotta go often, you gotta be persistent, uh, just because you didn't find anything today doesn't mean you're not going to find anything tomorrow. So I want to give a real quick shout out to Mr. Dude 206 for throwing this compilation together and take care guys. But here is my one piece of advice for the new video game collector out there that doesn't know where to start, how to start, what to start, what to collect for. Collect what you like and enjoy. If a particular video game and system from your childhood brings you that nostalgia, warm, kid friendly feeling whether it's the Super Nintendo, the NES, the Sega Genesis, the Sega CD, the Dreamcast, the Xbox, the list goes on and on and on. Collect what you love to play and what you enjoyed playing from your childhood. Hit those thrift stores, hit those pawn shops, hit the Craigslist. Um, it's the thrill of the hunt. Just keep hitting those 
time and time again. If you don't find something the first time out, well keep on trying because it's perseverance, it's the thrill of the hunt. How's it going guys? Here are a few tips that I uh, found helpful when it comes to collecting arcades. First of all, I would suggest getting a multimeter and learning how to use it. They're uh, not that complicated, so I wouldn't get you know, all intimidated. But uh, secondly, I would decide what kind of arcade games you like playing. That way, if you want to get multiple boards and swap them out, you know, using the same machine, you can. Um, other than that, before you pick up an arcade machine, I would test it out thoroughly, you know, that way you don't get home and you can't play it. Uh, definitely make sure the video works, because a lot of the, you know, expensive problems come in that department. Most everything else can be replaced or fixed. Well, that's it, guys. Uh, take it easy. One of the best pieces of advice I can give is when you're going out and getting any of this old game stuff is make sure among and above anything else, make sure you do not pay more than what that thing is worth. You know, don't get hosed basically. If it's worth a certain amount, pay that. A little bit close to it, a little bit less, a little bit more, fine, but if it's a significant amount, don't do it. You're only screwing yourself over and you enable them doing that more. It doesn't help anyone, so that's the best advice I can give as far as this kind of stuff goes. It's worked for me really well and it's saved me money at the same time. That's all there is to it. Hey guys, Long Boys Pucks 1975. Retro game collecting tips from Mr. Dude 206. People hide games. I know I do. We don't always have cash on us. The number of times I've popped into a game store, you know, knowing I've got no money, and come across a gem, and then I've stashed it somewhere I think no one will look, literally for a couple of minutes so I can just leg it over the road, hit a cash machine, and come back. My biggest tip to you is, you know when you go into like a used game store, and they have the games broken up alphabetically, and then they'll have a pile of like a title no one wants, like a million copies of the same sports title for like three quid each. You know, you got a lot of games like that in that bracket on the shelf. Check the last one. More often than not, it's a gem. The number of times I've checked the last one in the crap pile of games and come up with an absolute gem is, you know, it's too numerous to list because I've done it myself. I'll find a game I'll need to make sure, you know, no one's going to pick it up in the, in, in the few minutes I need to get cash. I'll stick it behind the copy of, you know, all the multiple copies of FIFA 20, you know, 10 because I know no one's going to look there. So that's my advice to you. Hey guys, Electric Adventures here, and uh, yeah, my top tips on collecting. Um, number one is actually patience. Um, although it's very nice to get uh, large lots of games at one time, um, I find it's actually much better to uh, get games a little slower. Take your time, um, savour each game as you get it. Um, some people even um, you know, only do one game at a time. They get it, they play it properly, um, and also take time in selecting it. That way, the games that you get actually mean more to you. Because um, what uh, you can see happening on YouTube a lot is people getting a large amount of games um, and not really getting the games that they're actually interested in. So that's another thing is, another collecting tip is find something that you actually are really interested in. So whether it be one, whether it be hardware or software um, for a particular system or multiple systems, try and focus on what you know the system that you're really after, rather than getting distracted and spread out. So there we go. Hope there's a few tips there for you. And um, I'm Electric Adventures, and I'll catch you all later. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is OK Chief 420, and this is a pro tip on how to look for disc games at Goodwill. So pull up a chair and start searching. What is it? Savage? Weight test on that chair is. That's a good one. It's like their most famous one, one of the most famous ones. Hey everybody, Kid Shore Yukon here with a quick collecting tip. My advice for people just starting out would be to first and foremost. 
figure out what you have available to you. Find out all of your local video stores, secondhand stores, pawn shops, charity shops, thrift shops, flea markets, any kind of shop where you might be able to find yourself some games. That way you can go find what they have available and cross-reference prices and stock. This way you can hopefully get your games as affordably as possible, which will hopefully end up with you getting as many games as possible. So that's my advice for those of you starting out in the retro game collecting world. This is Kid Show You Can. Take it easy. Well, if you're broke like us, a good thing to do is to wait for specials or sales at your local used game store. Our local store likes to do specials on holiday weekends where they give discounted prices for the consoles or do special bundles where you can get buy two games and get one free, stuff like that. So if your local store is like ours and it has a special like buy two games get one free, the best way to take advantage of this is to find three games that are about the same price because if you find a game that's say 25 bucks, a game that's 10 bucks, and a game that's five dollars, and you gotta pay for it expecting to get the $25 game for free, you're not going to get that game for free, you're gonna get the $5 game for free. So what you wanna do is you wanna pick out three games that are very close to the same price or equal to the same price to best take advantage of that, of that special. Some tips for collecting video games. Well, I think one that's really good that a lot of people don't do and a lot of people mistakenly don't do is if you go to swap meets or flea markets or even thrift stores and you see bins and bins of random things on the floor like baby clothes, um, tools, random sports equipment. A lot of times, if you have the time, it doesn't hurt to look in those. I can't tell you how many times I've been to swap meets and seen a box full of tools and I'm like, you know what, I got some time and I started digging through and Ninja Gaiden was on the bottom. One time I went to a computer store that had a bunch of routers and the guy didn't even know but he had a PC core engine um, in there and he thought it was a router, which is basically the TurboGrafx-16 Japanese part two style. So. That's a good tip, and another good tip is, I know most people hate to do this, but if you talk to a reseller and he isn't a, he isn't a complete douchebag, then talk to him. Get to know him, say nice things. I can't tell you how many times, if you've seen my channel, you know, we've got a lot of good stuff from resellers who even know what they have because we actually talk to them and don't treat them like crap, and we're like, hey, we're collectors, we're not trying to go resell this, and a lot of times they're like, you know what, we got a collection too, this is just what we have to do to make money. So. Yeah, there's a lot of bad ones out there, but if you can, talk to the good ones. The gardener outside is starting to do something and it's bugging me, so you're not going to be able to hear me soon. So, I'll talk to you guys later. Mr. Dude is so cool. What's going on, YouTube Nation? It is me, 32-Bit Professor, a.k.a. Coach. And I'm here today because of Mr. Dude, and he wants us to give our advice. Well, let me tell you what not to do. Do not go into game chasing, game hunting, whatever you want to call it, without doing your research like this guy did. Yes, uh, last month I got burned. Well, not really burned, but when I went with uh, OK Chief up in San Antonio, uh, swung for the fences on this one thinking that, hey, I might have a good title. And no, that's a piece of crap. I didn't do my research. And that's the most important thing, guys, is do your research. Uh, I didn't have my phone with me, so I couldn't get on Amazon. Uh, that's what I use. I use Amazon as kind of like my my price guide. Others use eBay. Uh, I like Amazon. Um, I use it in Afghanistan when I bought games, and that's where I got my uh, NES for thirty five bucks or something like that. But anyways, my word of advice is do your homework, research. Don't be like me and do this, and then on my next uh, pickup video, you'll see. Peace. Weekend game guy here. Uh, Mr. Dude 206 asked us to share tips that we have for thrifting and collecting and I'm really glad he opened up the collecting thing because the thrifting end of this I, I really have no input. Um, all the thrift stores around here are pretty rough and given my uh, status as a father and things of that nature I just don't have the time to go thrift like I, I wish I could. But uh, on the collecting thing I, I feel like I've got maybe a little nugget of wisdom. The, the biggest advice I could give anybody as a collector is be willing to let go. And um, I mean that on a couple of different levels, but especially in terms of, of the size of the collection you amass. Um, you know, I, I'll be the first to admit that I have a large collection, but uh, don't, don't be so attached to these things that they become so important that you neglect other stuff. 
And uh, I know in, in recent months, I've, I've had to let go of certain items out of my collection, you know, to take care of bills and things of that nature. And that, and that happens. Um, be willing to do that. But you also, I feel like you should be willing to let go of, of items in your collection and parts of your collection. As you, uh, as you mature as a collector, I think you'll realize that um, collecting for this system, this system, this system, this system, this system just becomes exhausting and not very fulfilling anymore. So if you can focus your, um, your efforts and be willing to let go of those other things, um, those other games from other systems and stuff like that, you can, you can one, you know, you can, you can snatch up some, some dough to focus on your goal. So I guess that's another piece of advice I could give to is one, you know, be willing to let go of things, be willing to let go of items in your collection. And two, you know, try to find something you can focus on. So that's, that's my advice. What's up people. My quick advice is swallow your pride. Don't be ashamed or too shy to ask uh, hard questions or for special privileges. Maybe you could say, so two quick examples of what I mean, well, yeah. Well, the first one is just simply ask about stuff that uh, isn't out for sale yet. If you see it behind the cash register, for example, maybe they don't have it quite ready yet, they want to sell it. And maybe they'll sell it to you if you're nice, especially if you build some rapport with the staff at the store you're at, right? So I found this, and I think I paid like 5 or $10 for it. It's complete. It wasn't ready, and I just said, oh, yeah. You know, whatever. And I just talked to him and I got it really cheap and that was awesome. And I tried not to show how excited I was that it was so cheap. Another quick one is, ask if you can be the one to handle stuff. A lot of times a disc isn't in the box. Just be like, no, it's fine like that. I'll put it in myself. This happened because I let the clerk handle it. And this happened because I let the clerk handle it. That was my bad. I should have asked to do it myself. I also had a little piece of a Neo Geo AS box get ripped off because he took the price tag off so violently. So swallow your pride and you know build relationships with the staff and ask if it's okay if you do it. They're probably happy to let you do it anyway because it saves them time. And sometimes you get free stuff like extra little disc holders or whatever. So yeah, sorry if this took so long. Bye bye. First off, I'm going to show you how I take magic marker off of my cartridge-based video game stuff. And for the second tip, I'm actually going to show you how to take off stickers from Plane Trade and GameStop. Using Magic Eraser to get magic marker off a cartridge-based video game. Magic Erasers are basically a low-grade sandpaper. Get it a little bit wet and just rub it on the video game and it just magically comes off. Alright, so you can see that the game is really clean now. All the marker is gone on it. It looks definitely better than it did before. So if you have cartridge-based games that have marker on them, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, get it. And now getting those stupid GameStop stickers off of the game. You want to start with the corner with your thumbnail and peel very slowly, leaving no residue. But let's just say you left some residue like I did here. We'll use the same sticker and peel it off, like so. It's a trick that a lot of the GameStop employees know, and it looks like the sticker was never on there. This is Dahmer's cool stuff, and as always, do good gaming. What's up, everybody? Harvey Dent here. Some tips about collecting. Um, I'm going to go with being thorough. You know, you, you go to a thrift store, and, you know, you see a box of stuff. Don't be fucked up about going through the whole box. You know, get down to the bottom take everything out of it if you have to I mean just be thorough just go from the front to the back of the thrift store side to side just jump in there jump in all the junk Scrooge McDuck style and start swimming through it it's happened to me uh, I went through it you know going through the thrift store not see anything and then go back through the same places that I went to and found some awesome shit. So, I mean, it, it pays to be thorough. I mean, you know, and uh, just... It doesn't matter who the fuck is there. I mean, don't be fucked up about what people think. You know, if there's some video games there's some shit of interest in a box or boxes or in a pile go through every bit of it it pays 
so uh, it, it, it's paid out for me uh, many many a time so I, I can't stress it enough to be thorough but I hope this tip helps somebody or everybody nobody doesn't really matter I don't really know what to do with my hands right now so I'm just gonna end it right there Harvey Dent signing out Hey everyone, Xander here from Excess Gaming Podcast, giving you guys some nice thrift store advice. Going to a thrift store can be very exciting for the thrill of the hunt, and you can accumulate a good amount of games if you go in at the right time. One thing I always do when I go to a thrift store is I go to the CD and DVD section and just look through it because sometimes games slip through the cracks and the people that work there don't realize they have a video game on the shelf, especially if it's a loose game. Like I got Shinmu loose for about a dollar at a thrift store. It was right beside a copy of Millie Vanilli. So with that being said, definitely check those CD and DVD sections out, guys. You never know what you may find, and that's the that's the exciting part of collecting. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and thank you, Mr. Do 206, for letting me be a part of this. As always, happy gaming. Hello there, we are the Nerd Masters, and we were going to put uh, our own tips into this video, but we decided to do it together as a group because, well, we don't do anything separately anymore, so we may as well make all of our videos this way. <laughs> and uh, to start off, we've got Ryan right now. What do you got, Ryan? Okay, collecting tips. Well, you know, if I were to give one tip, the thing that um, helped me the most as far as amassing my retro video game collection was going every day. I went to thrift stores every single day. Like, it, like, it was ridiculous. But that's how you do it, and you have to do it these days because you're competing with, you know, all these sharks and resell resellers out there. Like, there's a store in town that sells all old video games and nerd, you know, whatever, collectibles and stuff. And they actually pay people to go around to garage sales and thrift stores and collect shit oh, for them to sell dirty. in the store. That's bad. So, you're, so the competition has gotten so high that the only way that, you know, you're going to be able to compete is go every day. And that's what I did. Sometimes twice a day. Go in the morning and in the afternoon because they'll restock the shelves midday at a lot of thrift stores. So... Very you know, good advice. I, I do the one, same thing. One pig is to be persistent. So yeah, that's it. That's my tip. What do you got, Mike? Well, uh, it's a rather quick piece of advice. As the resident resident G seller of the of the group here, um, you got to make sure that you take a your morning shit um, <laughs> as soon as possible when you wake up, uh -huh. uh, because you don't want to waste time when you're traveling around to go find a bathroom that's suitable hold, hold on for though. your uh, Not budgies. right before you leave? You do it as soon as you get up, or do you wait you until right before you go? If you got to wake up an hour before you leave to shit, you got to do that, because right. honestly, on the road, it's uh, you're going to lose valuable time, because like Ryan said, there's sharks everywhere, man, and uh, mm -hmm. it's you got to get out, out there. there. You got to you gotta pound the pavement, you gotta take shit before you leave. So that's my piece of advice, if you are g Salon. Also good advice. Uh, I am gonna Simple go a completely that. different direction, probably from everybody else in this video. Everybody's telling you what to do, they're giving you tips on what you should go out and try. I'm gonna tell you what not to do. Do not get into retro game collecting if you are doing it for financial reasons. Don't try and make money off of it. Not just because of that. My reasoning behind it is it is a very unstable market. There are things that mm, are prices constantly... Prices are going up, though. Yeah, well, hold on. There are things constantly affecting the price of video games. And if you want to go out and you see something that you already have and you want to resell it to help fund your collection, everybody does that. But don't buy this stuff and then hang on to it, planning to sell it 30 years from now for a ton of money. Because most likely, the vast majority of it won't be worth a whole bunch. For example, ask all the people that bought Earthbound seven or eight months ago for $200 back when they thought it was a $300 game. Now it's worth about $150. So that, that possible $100 moneymaker has become a $50 loss. Things are constantly going up and down. Even though it looks like everything's trending up right now, a year from now, the bottom could fall right out of it. People could start re-releasing games that you have in your collection, which makes the pro the price go down. 
Uh, it could just be that everybody will get older and lose interest in most of the games out there. So mm-hmm. do not collect for financial reasons and don't ever spend a lot of money on games. And I mean, don't spend a lot of money on individual games. Don't spend a lot of money on games that you don't like. Like, for instance, if everybody is saying this is the best RPG ever, but you don't like RPGs, don't buy it. All it's going to do is waste money and space on your shelf that you could dedicate to something that you do like. So my advice, don't spend a lot of money on games. Don't buy it as an investment. You will lose. There you go. That's us. And thanks to Mr. Dude 206 for having us on. We appreciate it. <laughs> See you guys later. See you later. Yo, dude, how are you doing? Uh, you want a tip? I've got a tip for you. Whenever I go out looking for games, I look on the shelf all the time and I'll see the same stuff that I've seen a multitude of times. So what I normally do is I look for games that I've never seen before. For example, I saw this in Leeds and I was just like, never seen that before. What the fuck is this? I saw Square Enix on the box, I saw Atlas on the box, Bam, picked it up straight away. Turns out it's a good game. So, likely chance is, if you look on shelves and you've never seen something before, whether it be the spine or the cover, check it out because it could turn out to be something that you might enjoy. Hey guys, it's me, Goobah Hunter, and I got a tip for you. Uh, for everyone who's trying to get into collecting at thrifting, uh, I can't stress enough bring your smartphone. There has been so many times when my phone, just having access to eBay or to Google or um, just any auction site or uh, price guide uh, has helped me numerous times. Also, uh, you can put your list of games that you're looking for, games that you have on this thing. This thing is literally your best friend when it comes to thrifting. Um, If you see something odd at the thrift store, not really sure, uh, you know, find out what it is, go on eBay, see what it's going for. Even if it's not video game related, you'd be surprised uh, what you could flip it for. Uh, For a $5 investment, you could walk away with 50 bucks. Um, That'll help you get to something you actually want. And uh, it's just another way to easily make money. And uh, I never go on a thrift without my phone. Plus, you can always shoot video, so, you know, when you're in the wild, this could be your only uh, saving grace for finding that Earthbound and being the only person there to actually film it and show it. So, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this tip. On to the next. Hello gamers, this is Danny442. I'd like to welcome everyone to this video, a uh, collaboration with uh, Mr. Dude 206 a really cool YouTuber who invited me to do this with a, with a fellow uh, YouTubers out there. And uh, I want to give you my uh, tip on how to uh, go about collecting in the wild, uh, going to thrift store hunting and such. Um, so my take is to be consistent on uh, going out there, um, you know, frequently early in the day, and to just keep exploring different places that you would normally wouldn't do. Uh, that would include uh, thrift stores, uh, you know, garage sales, uh, flea markets. Anywhere possible that you can uh, get hold of secondhand um, uh, items that people donate or they're willing to sell out, um, you know, whatever junk that they uh, they don't want. But obviously, what we want is to give video games that they're not junk to us. Um, but one thing I do know that you have to be consistent. A lot of times, a lot of YouTubers, even collectors out there, they get discouraged by not finding anything, um, and that really throws them off, and they just just stop doing it entirely. But you know, one thing of my personal experience is um, a lot of times there are days and weeks that I haven't found anything. But you know, once that time that you do find something, you feel really accomplished in doing so, and you feel proud in going out and working so hard to try to find these treasures. And uh, one example would be is uh, one time in the past that when I first went thrift store hunting, I couldn't find anything uh, throughout the day. But when I went to end up going to one Goodwill. Um, you know, even at the very end of my search of that day, in that third guy Goodwill, uh, I still couldn't find anything. But there was one area that I didn't check was this VHS area where I didn't think I would be finding any video games. I just looked at it anyway, and end up that I found a, a, you know something that I didn't expect at all. It was uh, this Mario Kart 64 sealed in the box, you know, just laying there with a with a bunch of old VHS tapes. You know, I didn't expect much of it, but once I took a look at it, I was like, wow, I was amazed, and it uh, end up being you know, buying it for $3. And up to this day, I still cherish this um, as a reminder that 
I never gave up searching and and it just puts me forward into doing it more so in the future. I keep looking at it and I feel proud at it. So one day you keep going at it, you find something that you'd be proud of, you look in your collection and you say, you know what, it was worth it. And you keep going at it and it's all a lot of fun. And do remember, keep it fun. And that's what makes it exciting to be collecting. Again, this is Danny for you too. This is my take on collecting and I hope you get something out of this. Thank you again. My thrifting tip is find out when the uh, ladies at the uh, thrift store bring out the media. Now at Value Village it's a little easier to find out because they're kind of a corporate structure so they have set routines I find. Around my, around my house every place is different. Uh, they have set routines so if you can go to the thrift store at different times a day you're going to finally or eventually find out where and when they bring out the, the cart with the game so you can be there and just have pick the litter when the cart comes out, snatch what you want, and then leave the scraps for everywhere else. Um, Goodwill and Salvation Army is a little bit harder because they have a volunteer, so they kind of just do whatever. When they're told to bring out a cart, they push it out, so there's no real way to find out how to do that. But I find uh, at Value Village, it's pretty easy to do. That's my number one tip. That's how I get the stuff I get, is because of uh, I'm there before anyone else. Hey folks, 64-Bit Matthew here, and this is for Mr. Dude 206's collaboration video on tips and hints as to going game hunting. So, for this video, I wanted my tip to be going out consistently when you're game hunting. Now what I mean by that is, if you're one of the people that like to go out and hunt at thrift stores, um, pawn shops, garage sales, etc., you have to make sure you go out a lot. Like, you can't go out once every couple weeks and expect to hit gold every time. You gotta go out multiple times a week, you gotta go out often, you gotta hit the same places often because if something pops up there, if it's a good game or a rare game and it's at say a thrift store for a cheap price, there's lots of people game hunting and it's not gonna stay there for long. So you have to go consistently. Now you might go, you know, out of 10 times, 9 out of 10, you're not gonna find anything. But it'll be that one time that you do score something nice for a great price, that'll make it worth it. So you can't get dis discouraged if you go out lots and you're not finding anything because you know that's just the way it works when you're hunting at thrift stores and pawn shops. You gotta go out often and yeah, you might have luck, you might not, but that's the that's the fun of hunting in the wild. So yeah. So my tip is to make sure you go out lots and don't get discouraged. Hi everyone, this is Michael B. the Game Genie. I'm about to get on a boat. But before that, I want to give you a little thrifting video game pickup tip. I want to talk about resellers. A lot of people consider resellers to be the scum of society. I completely disagree. You see, <clears throat> best thing about resellers are a lot of resellers are collectors themselves. I know some of the other people that are going to be doing things for this video actually resell a lot of the stuff they pick up. So. When you're talking to a reseller, yeah, a lot of people have already mentioned, hey, be nice to resellers. Be good to these people because more than likely they're going to give you better deals. But the collector part is what you really got to focus on because these people are resellers. They're trying to make money. And if you get to know them and start talking to them about their collection, sometimes they'll let on that they may have some pretty expensive, rare, or valuable games at home. Then you harass the shit out of them to bring them in and sell them. I do this all the time. That's how I got my Chip and Dale too, you see. I started talking to a collector at the flea market, a reseller, and he mentioned that he had a lot of the 2s, DuckTales 2, Chip and Dale's 2, RC Pro-Am 2, Stu Fish. So anyways, <clears throat> I said, well, you should bring them in. And he said, well, I don't know, I still play them. I was like, you're never going to play them again for You've had them for like 10 years. What do you want that for? I worked on them. I worked on them like 9 weeks. Sure enough, he brought it in to sell it. And because I already did the first part, and we were friends, and we talked, and we were realistic with each other, he gave me an excellent price. So that's my tip. Not only be nice to the resellers because you might get good deals, you might get some inside information, and they may lead you on to tell you about their collections and the great games that you can harass them and force them to sell to you. I'm a horrible person. Hi. 
we're the 16 bit brothers and mr dude 206 Shoot. Shoot. has asked us to do a tips video for people starting out collecting and here is our tip get there early if you get if you go into a car boot sale which is what we say over here or a, a flea market or a swap meet or something like that get there early there's nothing worse than seeing somebody else with a box of, oh, walking out of the place. Yeah, walking out of the place with a box of something that you want. Yeah. Which has happened so many yeah, times. Or, like, filing through some games, knowing that the best ones yeah. have been taken. When you've got something like FIFA or 9 yeah. on, the, on the Xbox 360, they are, you know, you know that someone's already been there. You've got to get there early, because it is true that the early bird catches the worm. Is it? So if you tell Danny to pick you up at 5am, he might get there for about 9 o'clock. Yeah. But 9 o'clock is sometimes early enough. <laughs> I am doing a video for Keith, Mr. Dude here, and giving you young guys some collecting tips on how to build a bigger collection. Now my biggest advice to you guys would be, if you're just starting out collecting video games, is to collect what makes you happy and have a good time with this hobby, and not take it so seriously, and enjoy and collect for the games that you really, really want to play, that way you would never have any kind of re uh, gaming regrets. Uh, my other advice would be to get a monthly budget and stick to that budget and make sure you don't go over it so you don't go in any kind of debt because, um, again, video gaming is a very expensive hobby and one thing you don't know is from YouTubers like me and from other big YouTubers is that I've been collecting video games for over 20 years now and I've built this collection over 20 years so this is the... Uh, uh, culmination of all my hard work and I'm very proud of what I've done so you need to wake up in the mornings on Saturday mornings go to garage sales don't get discouraged know your prices for all your video games in case you need to sell off your doubles and most importantly just have fun with the, this hobby and always collect what makes you happy so there you have it YouTube that's all that information that you could possibly need for retro collecting or even thrifting out in thrift stores for these video games, you know, whether it be, um, you know, looking through the CD racks or searching other places or going early and, you know, just so many tips and things that uh, people don't usually think about. But anyways, I just wanted to add my last tip would be this, is to um, check any memory card that you can at the thrift stores if you can power on any systems, Xboxes, PS2s, GameCubes. And usually that you find on these uh, memory cards are the games that the people played while they had their systems. And I'd say about 75% of the time, the, the saves on these memory cards will find pop up at the thrift store later on. So that's a good tip for you in case you don't know, in case it even prevents you from going back, you know, day after day and trying to look for something that isn't there. So I usually check the memory cards when I can, or I usually just try to buy the memory cards when I can, take them home, power them up, and see what's on there. So that is Mr. Dude's tip for thrifting. And um, in closing, I just wanted to thank everyone involved and everyone that decided to help me out with uh, shooting a small one minute video or three minute video for some or just a little snippet with little information that they can share with the community and share with this video and anybody out there that's watching so i really appreciate it you know you guys are the best and you guys are really cool to do that and um all the links will be in the description below and hope you freaking get something out of this and find it useful or just help you focus on your collecting and thrifting needs. But anyways, this is Mr. Dude 206. Thanks again for watching this collecting video. And uh, until the next one, like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. And uh, peace out.